let's dive into something I think should be discussed. Uh, not just in relationship, not just in parenting or co-parenting, but throughout all of, and I want you all to really expand your thoughts. <laughs> okay. The topic tonight is what is it about a man that I don't like? What is it about a man that I don't like? And Ezekiel 22 and 30. Ezekiel 22 and 30 is the foundation of scripture. And it says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. So, if you have your, 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 and, and the mother pet, can you turn your microphone off until it's time oh, for you okay. to talk? All right, I'm sorry. Okay. It's helping the old saints. All right, thank you. We help the old ones, you know, they'll hold that mic. They had a mic on and, and don't never use it. <laughs> and then it's all and they'll tell you, I don't need the mic. I'm loud enough. <laughs> Ezekiel 22 and 30 is our foundation for tonight's topic and discussion. And I want to say God bless to those who made it out. God bless to those who sit at home watching us and you could have made it out. Amen. And God bless to those who... It's going to say all kind of things like all this came up, all that came up, but it is what it is. Um, I'm just learning now that as long as I'm saved, I'm all right. Amen. I ain't worrying about other other folks because we ain't going to be able to stand together in heaven no way. Amen. Amen. Y'all think this is a joke, but this is serious. People playing with church. I don't want to just be no every Sunday saint. I just don't want that on my record. I mean, I don't need that. I'm not a weekend lover to my wife. I'm an everyday lover to my wife. You know, I can't just choose when I want to love her. So I can't choose. And God don't get number two days out of us to come together. Thank God. And if it was some folks just not going to make it to glory. And I'm not talking about because people not who belong here not here, but I'm talking about and the whole world. They, if God was to grade us on how much we come to school, <laughs> boy, I tell you, this teacher right here will flunk a lot of folks. <laughs> oh boy, but let, let the church pay you to come to church. Let, let the church cut you a paycheck that take care of your bills. Every time you you you'll be here, you'll sweep the floor. You you you'll get on the next person, put the paper on the ground. Don't you drop that paper? I work too hard. Oh, they, oh, they, amen. But tonight we're gonna talk about, and you all gonna have a chance to say what you need to say. What is it about a man? And I'm gonna see if I can kind of soften it up some, so y'all don't hurt us too bad. But what is it about a man that you as a woman can use the terminology, I don't like? Who wants to go first on tonight? All right, first lady, but we're going to let you just put it all out there. One time, uh, 
but we do want to hear from you. So, since we do want to hear from you, I'm trying to get this phone situated here. What you got? What's your first thing? Oh, uh, my first thing uh, that I don't like about men is them wearing earrings in their ears. Men that wear earrings in their ears. So that's an uh, automatic turnoff, right? Okay. Men with earrings in their ear. My question now is, why do you think men wear earrings in their ear? All right. Some of it is about fashion. Who else? Come on, y'all got to talk. Because of their appearance. And I got to take it deeper than that. Some gay. <laughs> Some see other people wearing it. Come on. What else? Why you don't like men who wear earrings in the ear? You sit on the microphone. Some of them look like girls, so you don't know if it's a, a, a girl or a boy. All right, you don't know if it's a girl or a boy. All right, and, and come on, anything else? The Lord said a man should wear nothing pertaining to a woman. There you go. It is written in the Bible that the Word of God in Leviticus states that a man shall not wear anything. Let's read that. Let's 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 read that. Let's read that in Leviticus. And someone go over to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Someone go there. Deuteronomy 22, I said 22 and 5, right? Yeah. All right, give me one second. All right, 22 and 5, read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Okay. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. All right, so Moses is giving the law, telling them that thou shalt not wear anything that pertains to one another's clothing, apparel, or anything that a woman wears, a man should not wear that. Tyler Perry, a man should not dress up like grandma and wear a dress. A man should not wear pantyhose. A real, uh, y'all want to do this tonight? Man shall not wear women's 
stockings. All right. Hollywood rappers, for you young folks who love to watch Lil Nas X, whatever his name is, a man shall not wear women dress and call it a man skirt. There is no such thing as a man purse. Gucci purse is made for men. Women who adore that, you're just as an abomination as the man. And I didn't write it. God spoke it and wrote it out. Why would a man wear something which represents bondage such as earrings anyway? Earrings is a form of bondage. Meaning you are bonding yourself or binding yourself Making yourself a slave to something. It's a brand. Women wear it to help beautify themselves. But we ain't talking about the women tonight. We're talking about men. To my men. Name something else. What else? What else do you have? Hold on, it ain't your go. It ain't your turn yet. I'm coming. Another thing that I dislike about a man is him not acknowledging his wife if he's married. All right. A man not acknowledging his wife when he's married. You got to kind of make that a little bit more plainer as to what are you referring to? What are you referring to a man not acknowledging his wife when he is married. Um, when they are together and he sees someone that he knows, or if someone is trying to holler at him and he has a ring on his finger, he ignores the ring on his finger. Alright, so I get it. Do you all like that? Come on, you're not talking here. No. Huh? Oh. Why? It, bother me. it don't bother you. You ain't a good wife. Well, you can I'm going to believe that. <laughs> well, you can think you know different, but there's no way a wife is comfortable with her husband not acknowledging the fact that he is married. If so, that ain't a marriage. That's just a contract. And when our contract is over, we done. That well, we, we if you re, if we were gonna say covenant, then covenant mean blood covenant. If if they want to use the word covenant, and then we want to talk about covenant, covenant and times, and that should still be should be blood covenant. Meaning this thing should be even if I have to lose my life behind it. I'm going to honor my vows. Right. What does God has to say to the man concerning acknowledging his wife? I'll give you a scripture. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Let's go to that scripture. Ephesians 5 and 25. Let's go there. And let's see if it's going to, if the husband who, you know, don't acknowledge his wife, because my question is, do Christ acknowledge the church? Did Christ die for the church? Did Christ come back for the church? And is Christ coming back again for the church? So if all these answers is yes, 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 should not that man prove his loyalty and his love for his wife and towards his wife, rather she is in his presence or not? He should. He should. And God hates a husband and hates a man. Who does not acknowledge his, 
his spouse. Because it's, it's the same way it goes with me. If I ignore the fact that this ring is a there it is, cousin. You should have did that. Oh, yeah, this, that. this ring is a covenant. Oh, this ring is a covenant. Yes, and I must uphold what I am in covenant relationship to. Anytime a husband or a man loves God with all of his soul, all of his might, all of his strength, all of his mind, all right. he's not only just going to acknowledge his wife if she's there or not there and he meets someone out in public, but he is going to represent her in such a manner that the person who sees him will know he is not walking like a cheating husband. He walks upright. You can look at a faithful husband and see a difference in a faithful husband than what you can see in an unfaithful husband. Right. Yeah. They may dress alike, but their eyes don't stay in the same pathway. Right. A faithful husband it's going to know when I step out, I'm representing Christ, but I'm also representing my covenant that I made with my spouse. All right. Because why? The When the two become one twine, mm -hmm. one flesh, yeah. then nobody can put it asunder. Mm -hmm. In other words, nobody can come between that. Mm -hmm. So, Ephesians 5 and 25 says what? Come on, get on the mic. That's what you got it for. Okay. See how I got to teach y'all. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. No, wives love your wife. No, wives. Husband, love your wife. No, girlfriend, love on your wife. No, it's a like husband, love your wife. No, it said baby daddy, love on your wife. Uh, it's like baby mama. Husband. Husbands. Husbands. It, do, it, do it say husbands love on your wife? It's like husbands love your wife. So God is saying, I don't want nobody to be excluded and call yourself a man, which is singular. So I'm going to talk to the married and I'm going to say husbands yeah. with an S. Not singular. But this is for all. This goes for the saved husband yeah. as well as the unsaved husband. Right. Love your wives. And if, if husbands would love their own wife, they won't have a problem representing her when they're out there in public. All right. If husbands will love, don't blame the wife for why you're not loving her. Boy, y'all going to do this tonight, ain't it? Don't blame her for why she's not, you're not loving her the way she needs to be loved. Because I'm going to say something. If mother did not show or teach or instruct you on how to be romantic and intimate to a wife, you're going to struggle trying to be a husband acting like you know what a wife needs. Y'all don't want to hear that, do yeah. And that's why we got so many men who are still on the nipple of their mama. Yeah. Because mama haven't taught them nothing but how to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. So when they look at you, they're looking for mama. Okay. And when they step out, they don't represent you mm -hmm. because they're not going to let nobody know I'm still living with my mama. Mm -hmm. Boy, I know y'all ain't want that to come like that. Did you? But it's true. Watch what a husband will say about his wife in a slang word. Oh, that's my mama right there. That's my, that's my sugar mama right there. No, nah, baby, ain't nothing sugary about this woman right here. I'm your wife, not your mama. Life is in the power of the tongue. So is death. And they that love it eat the fruit thereof. So, you don't like a husband.
husband or a man who, well, husband who does not acknowledge his wife. Because watch this. This is the worst part. If you want to destroy your marriage when you're in public, all it takes is for that one time for you and your spouse to be getting out of the car, walking together. Come here, baby. We're walking together. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, here come one of them pads. Mm -hmm. Come walk it up. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to tell her, but slowly but slowly, I just let her hand go. Mm -hmm. And I done walked in the front of her. She ain't said nothing, mm -hmm. but she took notes. Mm -hmm. She acknowledged the fact that why all of a sudden now, you just let my hand go. And when the ex walked back, if the ex is not saved and delivered, she finna see if that love is still strong. Mm -hmm. Or do we still have something in common? All right. That devil gonna come up and see if there's still some residue in me. Mm -hmm. Hey, how y'all doing? Oh, look at you. Mm -hmm. Hey, how y'all doing? That's to cover everything so the wife won't get a problem because she had already saw from a distance he was holding her hand. He do got a ring on it. So do she. I know that ain't his kid's sister. Mm -hmm. So, watch this thing, baby. She ain't saying nothing. The wife that is. She's just humble and quiet mm -hmm. and waiting to be brought to the forefront. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, when a man love his spouse, his wife, He's going to take the back road and he's going to let her shine while he take the shadow. When the conversation come about, hey, how y'all doing? Oh, we're doing fine. Did you hear that? We are doing fine. Yeah. Listen, I want you to meet my wife. Mm -hmm. Don't introduce your wife by baby. This, no, my wife got a name. Dominisha. Right. This is so and so. And if, it, if I think that this thing is going to go a different way, mm -hmm. this is the one I told you that I used to date. All right. Just leaving it right there. Mm -hmm. Now my wife is smiling and saying to herself, he don't mind letting me know. Mm -hmm. I already knew that was her. You know, because that woman intuition in you all shows up. But when you got a husband who's stumbling and fumbling over his words, who can't seem to keep his eyes off of him. He trying to lie and say, I need to, probably need to get some other stuff. Go ahead, I'm going to catch up. No, you're going to stay right here with your wife. But if you got to make the man do that, he ain't really a good husband. Y'all don't want to talk to me tonight. You got to make that man Stay right there and help you grocery shop. We came in here together. We're going to search these aisles together. We're going to bag these groceries together. And we're going to put them in a car together. And we're going to take them out of the car together. And we're going to put them in a house together. And we're going to put them up together. Yeah. Simple as that. Teamwork. Teamwork. Make the dream work. Outsiders should never infiltrate your space when it comes down to you being a spouse as a husband. And here it is, not just not just with ex-relationship, but husbands need to acknowledge their wife, whether he is in her present or out of her present, even when family members are coming against his wife. You better stand up for your wife, and you better defend your wife, and I don't care if it's your mama, you better tell your mama, shut up, that's my wife. Because if you talk about my one, you're going to talk about this one. Yeah. We won. Yeah. Our world would not be like it is with folks running back, sons running home to mama. 48 years old and 50 years old, you running home to mama every time you and the wife get into a situation. But if you don't acknowledge her, nobody else will. They go for pastors. Don't just acknowledge your wife to the congregation, but acknowledge your wife when one of them newbies 
walk in mm -hmm. okay. with fishnet stockings. Okay. Oh, they ain't wearing that no more, is it? Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's them old suckers. <laughs> them old suckers. The, 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 the new schools, the new schools coming in and they ain't wearing no. Wear no stockings, and Lord Jesus okay. probably don't know what else okay. they ain't wearing, okay. but I don't want to know. Okay. I don't want to discover neither. Okay. But 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 the thing is is that you got to acknowledge her even when a newbie come in and want to come straight to the pastor. Mm -hmm. Well, sister, let me point you in the right direction. My wife can help you with that. Okay. Pastor, I just loved your message today. Well, praise the Lord. Pastor, can I get your number? No, you can give me and my wife's number. You can get our number. All right. My wife can take care of that. Pastor, I might want to need to call you for some prayer. Yeah, you can call. We got a we got a prayer line. Come on, here's somebody. And my wife is over there. See how you acknowledging your wife? You know what that you know what that scut bucket gonna say if she's coming, trying to creep. She gonna say, "Oh, I can't get into him, but I'm gonna go another way." Cause they're not through. They're not through tempting you. They're not through. Trying to get close to you. Mm -hmm. And it's not the, the man in you that they want. It's the anointing that's on your life that they want to sip as sweet. No, no women didn't want David because he was a good looking fella. Mm. And they wanted David because he was anointed to be king. Mm. Why? Why you got to be careful what the anointing draws? Because mm. if the real anointing on that man's life draw something and watch it. It should destroy the yoke and remove the burden. The only way it destroys the yoke is that a husband got to stand up for his wife and stand in the place of his wife when his wife is not there to stand. All right. All right. Come on. Moving. Move, how many more you got? How many more you got? You got quite a few more? Huh? That's all you had? One more. Let's deal with it. Come on. We got time. It's 620. If you're watching us, you might want to hit share. Share this. This raw here. Come on with it. Men neglecting their responsibilities. Wow. All right. All right. Men neglecting their responsibility. All right. Let's look at something. All right. Let's look at the scripture here. Let's look at the scripture. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 11. My wife says she don't like men who neglect their responsibility. Let's find out, according to the Bible, what God got to say as well. 1 Corinthians 13. I'm sorry, chapter 11. Chapter 11. And we're going to start at the third verse. But I would have you that the head of every man is Christ. Y'all want to see this order? Mm -hmm. And the head of the woman is, come on, the man. The who? The man. No, another woman. The man. No, a boyfriend. The man. The man. Uh -huh. And the head of Christ is God. All right. Is God. Now, here we go. <laughs> if the head of that man is Christ, but the head of that woman is God. I mean, is man, and the head of Christ is God. That's not talking about the head like he's over her. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna help y'all now. Mm -hmm. Too many years they lie. Mm -hmm. Man is not over the woman. When you talk about 
head, look it up. This head, and don't take it out of content, is talking about covering wives. So the head of that woman is the covering of that man. And if that man is not covering that woman, which is his wife, then he has no head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, okay, okay. L let me show you why I say that. You read these scriptures in verse 4, mm -hmm. verse 5. Verse 4 say, every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor his head. You see, what? this ain't talking about leading nobody. Mm -hmm. It's still that same word head. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about a covering. So, but every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonor her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. In other words, that woman needs a covering. And that man needs to stand and be the covering for that woman. And he cannot neglect his responsibilities no matter if his homeboys call, if his daughter, son, niece, nephew, first cousin, second cousin, third cousin that they don't claim they just hang out with them. It don't matter if the duty of that man which is that husband is to be at home and cover his house that day. He needs to be at home as a covering. Our streets would not be painted and stained with so much blood if the husbands would learn to cover their houses. But it takes more than just getting married saying, I do, and I'm the husband. I'm the man of this house. Mm -hmm. It takes more than just that. You got to pay them bills. Can't neglect that. Mm -hmm. Air Force Ones and Jordan should not be your first priority. Mm -hmm. All right. Chicken with Pookie and Doodoo and Ray Ray right. shouldn't be your first priority. Okay. Having your wife to find your Uber should not be your first priority. All right. hmm. Asking your wife what we gonna eat tonight, what you cooking, I'm on my way home, should not be your first priority. Hmm. Your first priority is to your household yeah, right. because God is holding you responsible. Hmm. A man who take not care of his house is worse than an infidel. In other words, you're worse than a heathen. Mm -hmm. God can't stand heathens. Mm -hmm. You're worse than an unbeliever. A person who don't even believe that they should be doing this. Because you got a lot of men, they get married, and they need a woman lonely at home. And I'm sick and tired of seeing saved women married but feeling single. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and got to walk like they still, and walk with the marriage life, but down in their heart, they say it's just like I'm still single. Mm -hmm. All at the expense of a man. Yeah. But, I got a good thing to say on that. You knew what kind of man he was before you married him. Mm -hmm. okay. And you married him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, son. They married him. Okay. That's right. Your mama knew what I was before. She married me. Mm -hmm. And she married me. I turned out to be all right mm -hmm. by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, who got the next flow? Who next? I got a man that don't reverence or acknowledge God. A man who don't reverence or acknowledge God. You, you don't like that. When you find a man who does not reverence or acknowledge God, that is not a man. Because God was in Christ and Christ acknowledged the Father. Mm -hmm. So that man who does not reverence or even acknowledge God is a bastard child. Mm -hmm. Oh! Right. Oh! Right. Oh, let's go over to 1 John and see what John got to say about some of this. Verse 1 John 
John chapter 4. Starting in verse 1. Beloved. This talking to you saved folks. Beloved. Tender heart. Believers. Believe not every spirit. In other words, that spirit is low. Okay, that means don't believe everybody's heart. But try those spirits to see whether they be of God. You don't go ask a man, and I'm not taking this out of content because it's going to fall right in line. Don't go ask no man, how's your relationship with the Lord? He want them drugs. He's going to tell you anything. Uh -huh. okay. I know I'm going to keep it real, Mother Pat. He wants he want you to come out of your secret clothes. Yeah. Okay. He wants to know what you're working with between them. What your tenderness look like under there. He wants to get close to you. So of course he's going to tell you what you want to hear. Oh, I love God. All right. Then he's going to go so far to say, I'll go to church with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after you sleep with me. <laughs> you gonna After you sin, then you want to go give praises with me. I'm going to feel guilty all over again. Then, I'm, then if the pastor preach about fornication, uh, you're going to sit there and say, that man judge you. But if you love God, you would not fornicate with me. And if you love God and my daddy is not in my life as a woman, you're going to go to God and ask God for permission to marry me. Because you know God is my father. Well, I should have, I give myself a hand clap. You're going to go ask God. Beloved, believe not every spirit, okay. but try the spirit to see where it be of God. Many false prophets gone out into the world. Hereby know ye that the spirit of God, this is how you know, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So you need to take it further when you ask them about their reverencing and acknowledging God. So if they reverence and they acknowledge God, I want to hear you call out his name. I don't just want to see, I don't want to test you in prayer because many people can say some stuff. I mean, even actors on TV can get up and pray. Even Judge Mantis, he gets up and he prays for the people and turn around and cuss at the same time. But you're going to have to take them deeper than that and quit falling in love for folks just because they know a couple of scriptures. Yeah. You can't. Oh, I'm so in love with him. He know, he know John 3, 16. Oh, my God. So? He went to vacation Bible school like everybody else. Ask him, what's the name of your church home? What's your pastor's name? Then tell them, I want to go and join you Sunday. And I want to find out how often your pastor sees you, knows you. What your tithing life is like. Because if you got a problem giving monetary your gifts, I know you're going to get mad at me because I'm a giver. Stop just falling for me and because, you know, they say they know God. The devil know God. Let me prove something to you here. Let me prove something to you here. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, wherefore you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. It is already in the world. I don't care. There are men who are children of God and then there are men who are children of the devil and when the Bible says be not unequally yoked with an unbeliever right. you're going to struggle if you marry someone who don't believe in the same God you believe in I want to hear his name because anybody can tell me God is God but can you call his name Jesus? Because Jesus is not just God, but Jesus is Lord. And there's a big difference. You can use the name God and it can mean a lowercase g, a deity. 
That can mean anything that you put your confidence and you surrender your your marijuana can be your guard. Your drug, your alcohol can be your guard. Your gun can be your guard. Anything you put all of your trust in, your job can be your guard. Matter of fact, you can marry a man and he'll make you his God. And then he'll turn around and try and reverse it and be your God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know when a... Oh, Jesus Christ, help me, Lord. This is going to hurt. This is going to get deep. Be careful that you don't allow your husband, I don't care who he is, to cause you to step outside of the word. All right, all right. When the Bible say wives... Submit. It didn't say wives be stupid. All right. Uh -huh. Thank you, Pastor, for setting me free. Hallelujah. Yes, that's it, Lord. You're free. You're free. Amen. Didn't I say that word submissive don't mean to be stupid and full of stupidity? That's right. You know, you need to submit to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not submitting to you when you come up in this house broke, busted, and disgusted, and I'm paying bills. Mm -hmm. I'm not submitting to you and you telling me that I can't go to church today. But this is how God will keep opening up doors for us. I'm not submitting to that. I'm not submitting to that because you want to lay up all day. Or you want to deter me from what I'm doing and God got me doing. No, if you don't like what God got me doing, then you knew what you was marrying when you married me. You knew my heart was connected to my father. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It's something about when you get married to someone who don't believe on the same level as you. You struggle more. They'll watch you go to church. They'll watch you do everything you need to do, shout and all that. And then they still come right there and get what they want from you. And they ain't got not a drop of love for you. And quick to lie and say, I love you. You know I love you. No, I don't know that. When you show me you love me, it's because you acknowledging and you reverencing my father. How can two walk together? They have to be in agreement. Is there a marriage called the marriage of the flesh? Yes. What happens when you marry from the flesh? Everything that produced from that marriage is flesh. And flesh reaps what? Corruption. So when you marry and if a man is not trying to turn his life over and be submitted to God and committed to God so God can teach him how to love his wife through the man. God don't want the man loving the woman. He wants to love the woman through the man. Well, that's powerful. Man, that's deep. Because when God loves somebody through you, you won't be selective in what you're going to do. You're not in control how you love. Be somewhere like me. Can be mad at your wife. And still do the most lovable things. Yeah, yeah. And then be amazed by the fact that you're mad, but you, you just just love. You love. Yeah, huh? And you be like, you know what, God, I, I see it. I see now, Lord. I see. That's just how you love me. Mm -hmm. She can be so mad at me that she go go cook me some chili dogs that's burnt up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I still eat it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And she'll feel bad about it because she knows she should have did me like, I'm just playing y'all. Oh, I don't do that. <laughs> no. no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no more. <laughs> that was a one-time thing. <laughs> I ate that cold chili, dog. <laughs> you ain't, you can't get me with no food. I'm a bolden. <laughs> Baby, you can roll my weed outside in the dirt. They <laughs> bring it to me. <laughs> I blow it off and eat it and still don't say thank you, love. <laughs> then it don't bother me just as long as you fed me something. I'm happy. Amen. Shoot. As long as I ain't found no leader inside an apple you brought me, we good. Trick and treat. Hello. Hello. Give me what, what else you got? What else you got? Oh, man, that's abusive. Now, that right there gonna hurt. A man that's abusive. Because I used to be one. I want as much as a, uh, a, a domestic abuser. But I was a verbal and a mental and emotional abuser. So I can talk on that. God, God allowed me to graduate from that. 
Don't ever want that man to come back. But a man that's an abuser can destroy the life that's in his wife. Just his words alone cuts deeper than a knife. It cuts like a two-edged sword. Because yeah. you cut her soul and her spirit. And it's twofold because you cut her character and her integrity. You couldn't. Yeah. So, with that being said, if he's verbally abusive, watch this. Verbally abusive. That woman needs to really go into a time of or a place of loneliness where she's by herself and she truly needs to ask God is this what you intended for my life in the process of saving that man? See, y'all thought I was going to tell you, seek God to get a divorce. No, because I'm going back to it. You knew what kind of man he was before you married him. And you still married him. He wasn't abusive. Yes, he was. You just didn't pay attention. You ain't see the sign. See, you, 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 you just thought abusive was physical. But no, abuse go more than just, I got to I Say it again. I, I, what? God smack you into the middle of that. Ooh. You better not hit me. What you doing? He better hit you. You ain't the first or the last he gonna hit. So when you do go around his mama, after he done tatted your eyes up and you done put makeup on it looking like a clown, you know, you go back to the old school way where they put all that blush around him. Cheeks be real red. And make up be too bright. <laughs> mom, that mom, his mama know he used to punch holes in her wall. So you know she know. You need to stop right there and say, Did your son ever raise his hand up at you? Now what you doing, man? That's my mom. Because he showed sure beating the hell out of me. And I'm glad we over here because this is what he needs to say. Will you drop him off and leave him there? Don't let him come back before you marry him. Don't let him come back. He just he said he won't do that no more. Cause some of these women are are, are just plain wrong old stupid. You get smacked upside your ear and it's ringing and bleeding at the same time. And all you can turn around and look at the man and say, "I thought you said you weren't gonna hit me." You still got to be crazy. Pop pop. You said you would never hit me. Pop. Why? And some of them are real stupid. If he beat you today, he beat you the next week, and he turn around and beat you the week after that, just because some dude looked at you, or somebody from high school recognized you, and he beat you when you got in the car, because you got women getting beat right now. It's happening. Some of them get beat before they get into church. You know what that is? That way he take that arm of yours and hit. What you hit me like that for? I'm just playing with you. No, he ain't. He sizing you up. He put his mark right there. Y'all know I ain't lying. He put his mark right there. A man that's abusive physically is a coward. If he got to physically beat his wife, Nah, he ain't gonna fight no man. He gonna take off running. <laughs> or he gonna go buy a gun. Cause he gonna wanna kill. Shoot. Yeah. They don't know how to fight no more these days. They don't know how to just go and get it over with and just live to see another day. They just got to shoot. If you got the beat her, your soul don't need her.
And the, you can't take back words that brought death to your spouse. You can't take that back. You cannot go back. I don't care how many I'm sorry and I apologize you give. Once that person is dead to it, you in trouble. We got women, wives mainly, who are walking tombstones. They are the walking dead. They don't believe nothing else nobody else say. Hey, how you doing, beautiful? <laughs> hey, uh, you look great today. <laughs> they looking for their husband to tell them that. Another sister can tell a, a, a wife that, hey, sister, girl, you rocking today. Oh, girl, this ain't nothing. And in her mind, she chopping. She twitching. She too abused. No peace, thank you. No. Confused. Frigid with her hands. You got some women that, that they love it when the church doors is open. They try their best to stay at everything that a church has going on so that they won't get beat. Boy, y'all don't want to talk to me up in here. They scared to go home. Some of them sleep with one eye open and that's the good eye. And it's twitching. Lord, I'm tired, but I got to watch him. Because he might act like he's talking to his sleeping. Girl, wake up. Wake up. That's me. He knew that was you. He wants sleep. He wants sleep. Don't think because you see it on movies, it's not happening in reality. And don't get twisted. It might not be happening to you, but it's happening to somebody that you know. But the question is, why am I in something that's that abusive? Is this what God intended for me? The answer is certainly not. God ain't got to be the woman to love on that woman. If you got an Ike, you need to drop him, all right? Y'all ain't hear me neither. If you got an Ike, you need to drop him, all right? Because that's a marriage of the flesh. Because what you beat in me, fear. What you beat out of me, my beauty. And watch this. When we go places, I can't never get it out of my mind. I don't care how many times we go to counseling. Oh, yeah, that's real. It's vice versa, but we ain't talking about the women tonight. We're talking about the men. When a man strike a woman physically, she'll never forget. She'll never forget. She might love you. She might forgive you. But she's not going to forget it. Notice the stance of a woman when an argument takes place. She makes sure she back up. She get out of your arms reach. She done already sized up the scene between your fist and her face. And she already close to that phone. Now since they sell phones. Shoot, she close to it. Videoing it, recording it, and now women are fighting back. Knock them on the ground and watch what they come out from behind with. You might knock me down, but I'm going to shoot you down. And I already done filed my restraining order and my peace bond. You just didn't know it. Saved women need not to go out and try and get an unsaved man and marry him and hope God save him. Leave his unsaved self alone out there. Leave him out there for the wolves or the hyenas. But don't you go bringing no saved husband here talking about God going to raise him up. No, God ain't. Because God going to deal with you on why did you go out there and get that. If God going to tell you as a Hosea, go get you a gold mark, then you better leave him alone. I don't care how much he look good. I don't care how big his feet is. Mm, okay. You know back then they went according to shoe size. Yeah. Mm. yeah, they say the bigger the feet, mm. you know okay. the rest. Okay. Mm. They show sure one the bigger the brain. Mm. <laughs> Some men feet too big, they tripping on themselves. Mm. You big sloppy feet, clumsy joker, you <laughs> lazy Clifford. <laughs> 
except for Andy Griffin. <laughs> Opie Taylor. <laughs> just, just ridiculous. So, we need to understand abuse is not just physical. What happens when you kill that woman verbally? Huh? When you kill her verbally with your words, every verbal word come out of your mouth is down in her. She's not going to feel like she is a conqueror or more than a conqueror. She might get out there and hustle hard for the family, but your words are still ringing in her soul, in her mind, in her spirit, and she can't get it out. And I'm going to tell you right now, it hurts a wife more to hear it from her husband as a downer than it would from the outside. Yeah. It's different when a mama cuss her daughter out. I can, I can deal with that and cry about it, and I got my husband to embrace me, but boom! When my husband say the same word my mama say, it, it's a different reaction. Oh my God. How? Why? What did I do to deserve this? You know? You know what you did? You just made me mad. You cursed me. You, you, you know, you got to be careful. That's why it's important to check with God. Before you play in the yard. Yeah, all right, all right now. It's important. Baby, all right. Can an unsafe person marry a safe person and God can turn it around? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's in First Corinthians. Be saved, yeah. Because yeah. he say, oh, saved wife, how would thou know if thou will save us, the unbelieving husband? Mm -hmm. You can save the unbelieving husband, through your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But it never said to stay in there and let them beat you silly. Mm -hmm. There's more than just physical and mental and emotional abuse. There's financial abuse. Mm -hmm. Do y'all know that? Mm -hmm. Where a husband can financially rape his household, his wife, can be withholding finances from her in those areas that it is needed in the house that it should go straight to the wife, for the wife, and not just towards the wife. Right, Do you hear me? Every husband ought to give his wife some kind of allowance. I'm talking, I don't care if she worked, you ought to give her something out of love. Yeah, not just on Mother's Day, mm -hmm. not just on Valentine's Day, but if, that, if the check is $300 over, it ain't no problem to go in and get $150 and $150. Come on, talk to me, somebody. All right, all right, all right. What am I losing? I'm giving to the person that I say to them do us apart. I'm giving to the person that I stood and said for better or for worse, for sickness and in health. Come on here, somebody. And if I give to my wife, it's like I'm still giving to myself. What is God going to do? Open up the floodgates of heaven, pour out blessings in our house that there won't be room to receive it. Well, she don't do that for me. She's not supposed to. You are the covering. You think the covers on your bed tell you, I'm tired of covering you. No, they made the blanket big enough you just got to have the sense enough to buy the right size. Right. You don't go get a full-size bed and go buy a twin-size blanket and expect it to cover the bed. Right. You go get a full-size or a king or a queen size. Whatever size it is, you got to meet the status or measure up to that size. Right. Some of y'all are kings and queens and sizes, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, all this, but you done married a man that's still a twin size. Mm, all right. Ooh, my God. Mm. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. A bunk. Yo, a bunk. We can go with a bunk bed. All right. We can go with a bunk bed. Right. Everybody they still playing one monkey, two monkey, jumping in the big tree. You know, one fell down and bumped his head. They still playing monkey go, and, and, and they still on the monkey bars. They ain't left the park yet. They still on the merry-go-round. So, when a husband downs 
his wife. The worst place a husband can do it is in front of people. Like, actually just pat her down. I, I done seen it and I done done it before where you not just use words, but your actions toward her kills her. Yeah. Eats her up. It's more hurtful for a wife to sit and just let the husband be at a at a family gathering mm -hmm. and and some of the family don't even know they got married that he got married and then here come his here come his sisters on the daddy side mm -hmm. coming to the gathering and here come some cousins and then you know you always got that one cousin who don't never think you good enough to to what they say flash Walk straight and fly right. Mm -hmm. You got that one cousin who just still think you still at Casanova. Yeah. <laughs> and he come up there. Boy, I know you be up on them things, boy. And that hood really be like, man, boy, you silly, boy, you crazy. Yeah. You know. That's how they talk. Like, like babies cooning to each other. You know, what kind of language is that? You know, never said a complete word. And all that, doing codes. Yeah. And the wife's still standing there like, baby, you going to introduce me? Mm. And then watch this, the cousin steps out of line. Mm. Man, she fine with my boy. Where you get that book from? Mm. No, man, that don't even say that, man. That's, that's my old lady. Mm. Not, that's my wife. Cousin don't respect you because the last time cousin dealt with you a couple of weeks ago, mm -mm, you was on that cheat sheet. Mm. You, ain't, you didn't have your ring on your finger. No. You came and been, you been hollering at cousin. Mm. Matter of fact, be careful. Mm. You'll know if he ain't your real husband. Okay. The day that you get married and right at the honeymoon, after he dropped you off, mm. I'll be right back. That ain't your husband. Mm -hmm. He for the streets. Mm -hmm. He for whatever he's connected to. Yeah. Sitting at home with a wedding dress on. Mm -hmm. Waiting on him. Mm -hmm. You done went took out that dress, lit cameras, put these fake plastic petals all, rose petals all around. Mm -hmm. Now you're in the bathtub soaking with candles. Mm -hmm. Water getting cold. Because you're still waiting on him. He, he come back on so sorry for God. How you forgetting this our wedding day? Yeah. How? Most black folks don't take honeymoons no more. Mm -hmm. They honeymoon be right there driving off in the car and go straight to the house. Mm -hmm. Get some shrimps and stuff and, and yeah. get some drinks. When he don't acknowledge you right then and there mm -hmm. as wife he don't even represent himself. Mm. So how can you expect him to honor God? All right. You can't expect him to honor God if he can't honor you. Because there's a God in you. There's no way possible that I can say I love God and I can't stand my wife. Mm. Yeah. That will be a lie from hell. Right. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. It is not right that soon as a, 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 a man walk past my wife or, or Elder Washington just speaks to my wife or something and then as soon as we get in the house, I slap in the back of her head till she hit the floor. What you hear me, baby? What I do? I see how you looking at him. Come on now, really? Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. And if you're not an insecure person and you're secure within yourself, you trust the God that's in you and the God that's in that individual. Satan loves to come at you with fear so he can torment the mind. Yeah. And if he can get you to take your eyes off of the truth of what it is mm -hmm. and put your eyes on something else that is not true, he gonna take that deception realm and he gonna walk in it. Mm -hmm. And he gonna play with you. You'll be walking in an illusion. Always thinking something is when it's not. That's why you have to be careful that before marriage, you make sure you check with God. And if you check with God, and if you got a man of God, which is 
a leader, you ask God to send that leader a word that you may obey the voice of God. Don't just say, Lord, I need a word this Sunday. Mm. And when you hear, it's your season. God getting ready to open the door. Oh, I'm going to get married. That ain't what the man of God just yeah. said. Okay. Because mm. some women don't want to be a wife. They just want to be a sex addict. Too, too, too. Just sex me. Because mm. why? I'm tired of holding out. I'm tired of being celibate. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know I'm talking right. I ain't touching myself. I want somebody. I want. I want something with the pastor got. Mm. Well, the pastor has to hold out. You gotta hold out. All right, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. You got to I'm gonna do one more. And get it All right. Uh, I don't like a man that's a manipulator. <laughs> Ooh. I was talking to a guy today at work. Lord bless him. <laughs> and I told the guy. We have taken that word manipulative and manipulation and given it too much power when it's really deception that's at work. Mm -hmm. So you should not just, because you don't find manipulation in the Bible, you find deception. See, manipulation is this, is when I basically put you up under some type of hypnosis and make you do something that you didn't think you can do. Okay. But I got you to do it. Mm. That's manipulation, which is a form of hypnosis. In other words, you have hypnotized my mind in such a way to where it's paralyzed. You stop me from thinking for myself. Mm. And now I'm under the operation of you. Mm. That's satanic. Manipulation is a satanic realm. Mm -hmm. But deception is the very face of the devil. And we don't want to see that. Mm. A man can deceive you and cause you to walk in deception. Mm -hmm. He can come as an angel of light. And be the prince of darkness himself. He will not transform into this guru that's a demonic demon until you get married. Or he move in. Oh yeah, this get deep in here. You manipulated me. You had me thinking that you didn't know he just deceived you. He didn't manipulate you. He did not hypnotize your mind and say, you are getting sleepy. Very, very sleepy. He didn't hold nothing in your face and say, follow my finger and watch me finger with your eyes. You're getting sleepy. You're getting ready to go out there and walk in front of the traffic and you're going to get hit by a car, but you're not going to realize that you just got hit. And when you do wake up, you'll be in the hospital. No, he did not do that. He just came and he came to appease the flesh of you. Mm. You can't marry a man who has not understood the role of a man. Mm -hmm. You just married a boy. Mm. You cannot marry a man who's still in search of his father and not even portraying to be the father to his. You just married another boy. Man who won't step to the plate. But he sure love to eat. You better be careful. That's not manipulative. That's deception. It's deceiving if I go, to, go out the door every day with work clothes on. And boots. And go around the corner and find the first dirt pile and put it all on me. And then, soon as my wife good and gone to work, I drive back at home, take off the clothes, and then leave them somewhere where she can look and see and think I've been to work. Mm. It ain't manipulative.
So if I'm telling her they cut my checks off, no, I'm deceiving her. I ain't never got a check. It's not manipulation if, if I'm telling you that I'm going to work, but I ain't telling you that I quit my work. No, that's deception. That's deceiving. If a man thinking himself to be anything, he deceiving him own self. That's what the Bible say. And if a man think he's going to receive anything of the Lord, the Bible tells him otherwise. God ain't giving him nothing. A man will walk up under damnation with God when he walk in deception. And you have to be careful because a man who deceives himself is definitely going to deceive you. Do you hear me? If you give him $180 and it's to pay that bill, but he put 60 on it, he's going to deceive you from then on. You're looking at next month's bill Trying to figure out why is it a little bit higher than last month. Okay. That's because the rest of the remaining of the balance rolled over and they studied them taking out on you or calling you and saying, hey, do you know that you normally will pay your whole bill, but all of a sudden something changed? They're not going to do that. Mm. But it's deception that when you think that you can trust the one you love, mm. the one that says, I do, mm. and then you come back with all the results that make you say as a wife, I wish I never had. I wish to God I never said yes. I should have said no a little while longer. And ran. <laughs> come on, cousin Pam, what you got? I know mother, mother Pam long with me. I love Mother Pat. I used to pick on my mama like that. She used to tell my mama, knock your head in, boy. <laughs> what you got? Mother Pat, give her the mic. Oh. Yeah, I told her she was long-winded. <laughs> Y'all kind of warm in here? Okay, I'm sweating too. He like it dead. Amen. I know you ain't going to have no problem working. You might be bright, but you're going to get it, all right? <laughs> Glory. My question is yeah. um, as a husband, I don't understand. Cousin, you sound like a white lady. Can you talk up? I am a white lady. Like a news yes, reporter. Yes, and black skin. You <laughs> have a sound like a news reporter. Yeah. My question is. Oh, okay. My question is I, I can't understand why. Men, I'm going to say it like this, govern their houses different when God is the head. And yet, let's just say, if you had a situation in your house and I had the same situation, the outcome would be different. But God has left instructions in place. Mm. Ooh, that's You had to go there, then. Golly. They all looking for something simple. So to make her question plain, why do men who are of God, basically, govern their houses different when the Bible gives the same type of instructions for all men? Simple. Because we interpret the scriptures different. Some don't some scriptures don't need interpretation. They just need obedience. Oh, man, that's deep. What happened? Maybe I went like that. <laughs> Some scriptures don't need to be interpreted. Because really with interpretation, there is a reinterpretation. Because even though I'm interpreting, I'm going to add something in there. And I'm redoing it. So if God says, if it was written plain in the Bible, husbands, when you work, you give God his time and you give your wife the rest of the money that she may do what is needed. 
Here goes the reinterpretation. I'm going to give God some of that money and I'm going to give my wife what I feel like my wife should have because I was taught as a man. Forget the man of God. Because I'm a man. This is where they go wrong when they say, I'm a man first. Oh, no, sir. God is first. And if God said about David when he was a boy, he's a man after my own heart, that means he was a man of God and from the foundation. You just have to let the God in you become the man. Oh, oh Jesus. You got to let the God in you become a man. So, man, y'all gonna mess me up. You do this. You gonna do this. Put it on me. Don't do that. I'm not trying to do something. Oh, Jesus. I felt that. But the reinterpretation is give God a portion, five, because my 10%, he's still going to get it, but he's not going to get 10 in no tithes, and definitely ain't going to get 10 in no offering. He ain't getting 20. So that 10 going to be five and tithe percent, five percent and offering. And then watch this. That wife going to get some of that money, and she better make it work. Because I reinterpret it. Because I was taught as a man not to give a woman all of your money. But then you got another man of God who comes along and he says, I'm happy when I'm broke and my house is in order. That other man of God say, you a fool. And that man say, well, indeed, I'm a fool for the Lord. And I can tell you that there's no lack in my house. Oh man, I'm still not. I don't care what. I don't care how you put it, Doc. I'm not giving no one all my money. You can give it to him. Man, what you gonna have for yourself? I don't need nothing for myself. Cause I got a Proverbs 31 wife. And that Proverbs 31 woman go out and she work with her hands. She her husband have no need of spoil. And her husband will sit up in the gates with the elders. But when you ain't got that, then you're trying to figure out how you're going to make it work. Some men don't know what type of jewel they have as a wife until God removed the wife out of the life. He has no more hope for restoration. When you see him again, he don't even look the same. You know if a man is of God, because if there is any problem going on, the same book that y'all read together or go to church and hear and being preached to you, that same spirit that you hear is going to quicken you. A real man of God ain't going to go and cheat. His God, neither is he going to cheat his house. So I think that God knew not to put this in the book. But I bet you, you might not find it quoted like this, but you'll find God holding man responsible for this one. When he say, will a man rob God? And the Bible say, you have. Will a man rob his own house? Oh, yes, indeed, you have. You get, A man can rob, I don't care if he is a preacher or a bishop or apostle, whatever. He can rob his own house. And watch this. Most preachers are now still robbing their own house when they are on social media more than they are at home with their own wife. They don't want to hear that, but I'm going to tell the truth. You don't need no 6, 12, 7, and 9 p.m. Where is there any time for your wife? God ain't preaching through us that much. There is a season where God goes silent, you know. And even the leader is trying to search out God for a word. Oh, yes. Come here, prophet Elijah. Elijah said, I went looking for God on the mountain. He was not there. Now, this is the prophet. This is the man of God. He said, I went in the fire. He was not there. I even went in the flood. No, he wasn't there. I didn't look for him in the whirlwind. <laughs> he was not. But he was in that still, small voice. He didn't just find God in that one session. 
even though it was coded like that. He didn't go, and then 10 minutes later, he over here. 15 minutes later, he walked over there. 20 minutes later, he went down there. No, this was happening period, through, through some time station. So there is a season where God go quiet and say, I done said enough. All I want you to do is obey what I said. So for the husband who has an operation in his house that is not lining up with the written word of God, that man is a curse without even knowing. He is robbing and he is taking the spoil of the house. He's taking the goods of the house and letting the enemy spoil it. He's allowing the devil to rob him of the fulfillment and the plentiness of the blessing God want to put in the home. I think if husbands can trust their wives like their wives trust their husbands, we can be more blessed. Y'all don't hear me do. We can be more blessed. If we stop acting like our old mama used to teach us how to act, or watching what grandma, grandma used to do, give a little something, hide a little something. But if we just come to the table and stop this 50-50, We'll be better spouses. Husbands don't have no time to play 50-50. 50-50, you still your mama's child. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Because I'm wondering if you come into the table with 50, where's the other 50? Y'all don't want Pastor Barton to do this tonight to y'all. Where is that other 50? When I met you, I brought you 100. Why are you bringing 50 over here when it should be 200 over here? This one house should have 200% operating in it. And if we got one child, that makes 300%. Because we're going to teach that child how to bring their food to the table. Come on here, somebody. The seed produced after its kind. But it goes back to the upbringing versus the instruction. Because although we instructed our raising, watch what the scriptures say. For the tradition of men have made the word of God a none effect. So even though God's word is death, it's null and void because of my tradition. And if my daddy did not give my mama all that she had, that he had, because his daddy did not give his mama all that he had and his daddy daddy didn't do it then what you think is going to fall I'm walking under a curse and I need to break that curse but it ain't easy to break that curse because if I've been cursed all the way up to about 40 years old and I'm married or remarried I'm going to bring that same curse into that relationship too because I'm not going to tell that wife because now I'm 40 some years old I ain't going to tell her all the hell that I actually went through but I'm just going to keep some of this stuff because the last wife well she should be the last wife but she ain't that last wife come on here somebody the woman before you well if you can get yourself delivered from the woman before me maybe we can go and go down and, and, and get what God has for maybe we can walk in our inheritance it's a cousin. Come on, cousin, with your next one, because you, you done messed me up. You done knocked my head all kind of ways with that one. Shoot. That was good. Coming. Separate stuff. That Instructions is different. That was good. We don't we don't hear the same. And we should. One mind, one spirit, one accord. Right. But we don't want to hear the same. Right. We want to get mad at the young, the young husband. Who gives his whole 100 to the house? I went and did some jobs. And lo and behold, doing the jobs, I come home, I cut even with my wife. Tax season came around. I felt we did, took care of some situations and stuff. And then God allowed us to get our blessing back in return. We split even, didn't we? And we didn't just split our taxes even, but turned around with no problem and split it the work money that I just made the same day. I mean, the, the day after, split it. And we were splitting it all the way even. She said, you're going to make me cry. I 
said, for what? Because ain't nobody never done nothing like this. Baby, you ain't never been married before. These are the benefits. I'm the Lord of Shia. These are the benefits when you are married to a man that's of God and come out of God. These are the real benefits. And watch this. Don't, I cannot try to control what she did with her sharings, with her earnings. Yeah, she earned it. Because when she took on my last name, she earned everything that comes with it. Now they're going to talk to me. When, when, when you take on that man's last name, you get everything. You're not a joint heir. You are an heir. Husbands need to stop trying to make their wife joint heir. We're not co-partners. We are partners. You're not going to start a business as, as a husband and make your wife a member of the company. No, you're going to make her owner. Somebody needs to be the president and somebody needs to be the vice president. Because if not, one of your officers can take your place, president. But if you got a vice president, they steps in the place of the president. That's why all my benefits, and I ain't scared to say it on no, on no lie, because I got my priorities in the right place. All my benefits are split in a righteous way. But when it comes down to the bulk of my retirement and all my other benefits, my wife is beneficiary of it. As long as she lives. I got something separated from my children that my wife ain't got to go into what I'm leaving for her if I go with God called me before her. She'll be blessed so good that she ain't got to worry about another man. She can go buy her some houses and land. Amen. Trust me, I'm leaving her well off. She would not be like the widow woman who only had two mites in this Bible. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Amen. So you got to make sure that as a husband, you are doing what God say. And I'm telling you, it even should be like that when husbands are founders, so-called, of the church. The wife should be the next reign in their stead if there is no children to be raised up. All right. Going up under these different church names and the wife now is the first lady of the church. The husband passes away and here come another minister that the bishop put there. Bishop, y'all ain't by this building. Me and my husband bought this building. We just happened to go up under your church name. Such and such and such and such. We under your jurisdiction, but now you're taking everything from us. And the wife ain't got to say so. And then, you know what? That preacher come and they ain't got the same heart as your husband. Now you're out looking for something because your husband didn't do what was right. Or your husband sitting up here doing, man, y'all going to make me do this, ain't it? Your husband doing secret stuff behind your back. Got everybody else assigned to something and your name is on just a small portion. Man, please, you might lift up and open your eyes straight in hell if you don't do what's right. God going to hold us responsible and accountable for everything that we do. Rather we do it righteously or we do it unrighteously. Rather we do it just or unjust. And I don't care how no other preacher feel about it. It's either you're going to be one with your wife or you're going to be one with something else. You can't divide one. You can't, you can't put one into one. You can't divide one. You're still going to come up with one. Come on, cousin. Come on, come on, come on. You don't need to tear this church up. Your children are no longer your responsibility when they become the age of accountability where they know right from wrong. In the Bible times, 
at the age of 12 on up, that was no longer the responsibility of the parent because they was able to know the difference between good and evil. Because look at Jesus at 12. He knew better. He went and watch how he stopped it at 12. He stopped that you responsible stuff because his mother said to Joseph, where is Jesus? Y'all remember? And they had to turn around and go back to Jerusalem. And when they went back to Jerusalem, Mary found him and said, where were you? We was looking for you. He said, did you not know I was about my father's business? In other words, you don't have to worry about me, but you're 12 years old, little boy. No, he was letting them know that this is the age because the number 12 means governmental perfection. That means you ought to be perfected enough to be ready to walk like you should. Notice, a 12 year old can be left at home and the police can be, or oh, someone can knock on the door. And if that 12 year old is mature, they know how to answer the door. They know what to say, how to say it. And the authorities can't do nothing. How you know? Because there was a time when I left Piola at the house when she was 12 to watch her siblings. And I just ran up to the store and came right on back. I went and got them some polar pops, thirst buster things. And when I come back, Piola had told me that some people had come by and asked about uh, when we was planning on cutting our grass. And they was from the neighborhood associations. And they left a note. And they asked her, what's her name? And she said, she gave them Piola. And that was it. And said, if you'd like to know anything else, my dad will be back shortly. And she left in his dad. That's mature. You know. Now, here, Jesus saying, I'm about my father's business. You don't have to worry about me because that government that and that well that govern me, you don't have to govern me. I'm being governed by my father. And I got to start on his mission and doing what he called me to do. Now he's taken away off the scene and we don't hear from him no more until he's about 30 some years old, getting ready to start his ministry. Now, watch this. Watch this. Your children may forever be your children no matter how grown they are. But at some point and at some place, it's wise for a father and a, as a husband not to disobey the wife and obey the children. Because the wife is the head of the children, meaning she covers them, but she comes before them. And anytime the wife does not come before the children, hear me, God is not going to move like he needs to in the fullness because that man, and they don't want to hear it, but I'm going to say it, is out of order. He's out of order. If Helen is 30 and Helen comes and say, Daddy, I'm short on my car insurance. It's my job to say, did you talk with your mama before you came to me? Because if so, we need, your mama show would do good. She always did good with coming in and informing me. But I'm not going to just let my daughter tell me and she 30 that she's short on her car insurance and I go, oh, baby, don't worry about that, huh? Go ahead on and pay the car insurance. Matter of fact, I'm going to get you 500 more dollars so, and, and put that aside for next month. She ain't going to put it aside for no next month because if she was out here turning up and that's why she didn't pay her car insurance, y'all ain't going to talk to me. 
She ain't going to pay our car insurance next month. She going to come back to me again and say, Daddy, I'm short again. And next thing you know, her car insurance is going to be paid six months off of my expenses. And she going to realize that she can keep doing that. And when it moves from car insurance, it'll move to a little small thing such as, you know, my electric bill. But, but, but hold up now. Wait a minute. Do dad need to just move in with you? Huh? Because I'm paying all your utilities. I'm paying all your tuitions. I'm paying, what did I raise you to be? How did I raise you to stand? And if you got anything to say to me, you show sure better not tell me what I got a man. Because I'm really finna deal with you. If you got a man, why he ain't helping you pay some of these bills? And you coming over here to this man. You ain't my wife. Step on my wife. You got to learn to check your grown kids. Grandparents, check them. Check them. Mamas, check them sorry sons. Check them. Why? Don't stop opening your mouth, telling your husband the truth. You keep telling him the truth until one day he wake up and realize. Because what kills a woman, a wife, is when the husband places her on the back side of the mountain and then go and tend to the family like they the sheep of the flock. That kills his wife. We can be anywhere, baby, I'm smiling, but ooh, it's burning me up on the inside. Every tax season, you want to give a portion of our taxes? To your mama? What is your mama giving and contributing over here? Am I talking right? What is your son doing over here? And God forbid if the husband overlooks the wife's word when she say no. Wait a minute. Wives, submit unto your husbands. Husbands. Ye likewise submit unto your wives. Submit ye one to another. Just because you were the pants, don't mean they ain't make women pants. Just because you got a belt, don't mean they ain't made a woman's belt. Just because you carry the title, man, as your logo. Don't mean you got the right to take the man out of the woman. Oh, y'all don't want to deal with this tonight. God don't make no mistakes. He didn't make man and then call her girl. Or footstool. He didn't make a man and then call her stepping stone. He didn't even leave it as her. He gave her a title called Wolf Man. So it's still a man in there. Meaning, man, you need to see yourself in your wife. What is that? How would you treat yourself if you look at your wife and you do her this way? That's how you're doing you. I'm just sorry. I ain't never been a sucker for nobody. My mama showed me through her lifestyle. That her husband come before her kids. She proved that. She honored that. You weren't going to take her away from what the word said. When we got grown. And we went through something. You can stop by and spend one night. But you're going to make a cot on the floor. You ain't sleeping on her couch like you a kid no more. You ain't going to mess up her couch. She said. He go kind on the floor. And at 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock around 2 o'clock, she up praising God still like she always did from when you was little. Putting that all back on you, grown as you will. Now you, mama, come on now. I'm too grown for that. Well, get up out of my house. Golly, I wonder do you put daddy out when he come up in here this time of morning. That's my business, not yours. Matter of fact, go home to your wife. I just thank God she didn't have to tell me that number one time when I was married before. And she said, go home to your wife. I, I, I wanted to 
to stop at the door and turn around and say, that is not my wife, mama. Because <laughs> I knew, I heard God tell me don't marry that woman, but I, I still married her because she was fine. That's why I married that first one, because she was fine. That's it. No other reason. I married her from the physical and the flesh. Too. That's it. That's all. I, I just saw sexy. And, and I thought that was going to remain like that all my life. But that sexy right there ended up getting with somebody else and giving that sexy away to another. And then the, the person she gave it to was younger than me. When you marry in the flesh, you do things of the flesh. And you reap the corruption of the flesh. You marry based off the spirit, guess what? You will reap joy and peace. <laughs> so, what age should that husband stop carrying those kids, right? He should stop carrying them at the age when they become accountable. If you can get up and go get a job, you are accountable. If you got two legs and you got your top lip, bottom lip, one tongue, two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, two hands, and you clothe in your right mind, the activities of your limb is functioning, and you can say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, you can articulate, you can understand, you can comprehend, and you're not incompetent. You need to go get a job. And whatever you do not have to cover, then I need to teach you how not to try and live above your means where I'm taking care of your means so you can live above. I know, I know, I know, I know. That's good, ain't it? That, that, that's tight right there, ain't it? Huh? Because some kids want to say, I'm leaving here and I ain't never coming back like you were raised up in the worst house in wolves. Come on here. And they go out there and go get a condo and can't even afford it. You got a ghetto mentality trying to live in a condo. Baby, baby daddy drama. In and out ball friends. Door just swinging wide open, open and closed. Matter of fact, the hinges on the door in the condo is off. You call daddy to come and fix your lock. You call daddy to change your tire. You call daddy to put air in the tire. You call daddy to check the oil, change the brakes. You call daddy because your key got stuck in the ignition. You call you should have married your daddy. But when daddy tell you no, oh, you ain't got to worry about anything like you never did nothing no way. I already know who it is. It's their wife of yours. You wouldn't tell me that if you weren't married. The devil is a liar. And if it is that wife of mine, she finally woke me up to some good sense. You using me. We don't see that we lose it because we too busy and caught up on the fact that that's my baby. Oh, boy, that's powerful. We don't see we lose because we too caught up on the fact that that's my child. And I don't care what nobody say, I got to beat up for my child. But your child don't care what you say, they're not there for you. And if you get sick and you get old and you get wrinkled and you get crippled, your child is going to be happy enough to send you in your good check that you get to a nursing home. Because your child ain't going to stop their life to take care of you. But you will stop your life and lose your wife to take care of your child. Something wrong with that bitch. And a man that's married cannot live a man of God that's married cannot live a double standard life and get away with it forever. You can't be married to a wife and then married to your children and they 50 and 43. 21 year old daughter, 30 year old son, and they both in the clubs turning up. On the last ending of the month. But they rent is due Monday. 650 over here. 1200 over here. Now I'm all inside of me and my wife's retirement pension. Pulling from the 401. Drawing from the Christmas fund. Money running short, and I done gave out six hundred and twelve over here. That's a total of eighteen hundred dollars. Two 
close to two grand. They'll keep it up three months. You done lost a lot. And guess what? It's easy to pull from them thousands and get back down to the hundreds, but it's hard to climb from the hundreds and get back to them thousands. And if the husband is not safe enough to hear a call, the God of peace, say stop, put a stop to it, cut it off, cut that life support system you feeding them on, cut that lifeline right there and let them depend on me. Let them come to the same source you come to. The same needs you have to bend, let them bend and bow and let them come and ask me like you have to ask me. Because the way you got it was not easy and they are taking advantage of you like it's easy. If a man of God can hear that, he won't have a heart attack with a surprising when the kids tell him when he say no and they say oh well I ain't worried about you like you never cared no way you ain't never did nothing for me no way you must be crazy you choose that woman over us anyway what I did go give me all my money back I gave you since I choose her cause I disobey her to please you come on you got another cause, cause this ain't gonna never stop it gets deeper. It, 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 it's hard. <laughs> Come on. Okay, my next question is this. Um, when a husband and wife is not on the same page, when it comes down to the tithing or the giving, um, the man takes the lead and says something well, I hear God, but he's not including you. Hmm. He ain't hearing God. He's not hearing the Jehovah. He ain't hearing that self-existing God. He can't be. Because to just say, I hear God and leave it there, that's no understanding right there. Get knowledge. Get wisdom. And with all thy gettings, get an understanding. And we need to understand on the same page. So if you enlighten me as the wife and give me a little bit more to work with, maybe I'll be understanding other than I hear God. It's easy to say, I hear God. But what did he say? Well, if you hear God, husband, what did God say? Did God say to you what to do and, and didn't tell you, and he told you, don't include me? Because if God say the two shall be one flesh, let's go back to the garden. When Eve did what she did, God didn't come down. He only came down on the disobedience of the husband. When God came to Adam, it was because Adam had failed and sinned, sin of disobedience. God didn't have to include Eve in it because he didn't give Eve the instructions. He gave it to Adam. But it was Adam's job to become one with his wife and share with her what God told him. Right. Do that make sense? Yeah. So if she would have known, yeah. then she never would have listened to the plan and the trick of the devil. That's right. That's right. Notice what Adam did. When God came, he said, Adam, where are thou? He said, I was afraid and I went and hid myself because I was naked. God said, who told you you was naked? He said, the woman you gave me, she gave me that fruit and I did eat. He said, woman, what have you done? She said, the serpent beguiled me. He tricked me. He deceived me. Adam, you blame the woman. You say, the woman that God gave you. But the woman said that she was tricked. She was tricked by the very thing that God gave you power over. Right. And you let that spirit minister to her 
and deceive her and you were standing right there the whole time the conversation was going on and when she ate, nothing happened. But the minute you ate, both of y'all eyes came open. If a man is going to do what God say do and say, I hear God, guess what? If it's not proven that he have correctly heard God, the whole house suffered. And that's when the wife needs to come back and remind him, honey, we need to talk. You said you hear God. But look at our finances now. Look at where they was and look at where they are. And you're telling me that you hear God. So did God tell you that he was going to put a decrease in our savings? But increase somebody else's handicapness? Did God say he was going to decrease our income, but increase someone else's income when they can get out here and do what we do because we have te we have taught them to increase. So they should increase. We have lived a life of increase before them. So they know how to increase. So when Adam messed up, Eve caught the backlash of it. Man still got off easy. You let me tell the truth. Because all man got to do is go. Whew. But he still got the strength to go to work. But the woman got to. Watch this. She got to travail in birth. And take the risk of dying on the operating table. Man that a preach right there. A man ain't dying out there. And he, he just eating the sweat of his bra. But the devil ain't just passing over that woman constantly, six, seven times while she's giving birth. She can pass out and never can be shocked back to life. Come on here, somebody. Right. Giving birth to a seed that a man put in her. Uh -huh. And you mean to tell me if you hearing God, God don't tell you that you ought to treat her as unto the weaker vessel? That means you going to treat her like the tender rony she is. And when you do not reverence and include the wife, then God is out of the equation. Because right. God cannot be the God of the husband and the husband is not trying to be the lowercase God of the wife. Right. God can't be in the center. God, And that's why you got so many separations in marriage while still married. Right. We got separate accounts. We drive separate cars. We live in separate rooms. Y'all, do I need to keep going? Huh? We eat separate food. Come, you, do I need to keep going? We may sit at the table, but we don't sit across from one another no more. Or we sit separate when we got to eat. You go in your, your man cave, I'm sitting at the table or at the ballpark right there. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Everything, when it starts to be separate on an on a obedience thing, everything that falls down is separate. We live separate lives. We might go to separate churches. We might be getting a, 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 a separate meal. I say I want Taco Bell. You go across the street and say you want Southern Classic. I say I want, I, okay, I'm just going to get Southern Classic. Now nah, I'm going to go ahead and Taco Bell. Make up your mind. Okay. Everything is out of order. Can't you see that God is not the author of confusion? Uh -huh. But he's the God of peace. And whenever the wife don't have any peace about the money that's coming and going, because she don't have a say-so, there's no peace right there. God is not the author of that. Anytime we in the house and we're godly men and women and we're arguing over our finances that's going into the house of the ungodly, God is not the author of that. So you can't be hearing God. Because God going to tell you as the head, humble yourself. Yeah. Humble yourself and hearken unto the voice of your wife. That's what he told Abraham. Listen to thy wife, Sarah. She said, Ishmael came for the Holy Ghost. Jesus. When Sarah told Abraham, Ishmael had to go. She, you better know, she said, you better not give him no money neither. I'm going to tell you what to do. Give them this bread and give them this water. Mm -hmm. They won't be hungry, neither will they be thirsty. And it can give them where they're going. Abraham went outside that night and God came and the Bible said, and God talked to the man mm -hmm. and said to Abraham, 
obey thy wife, Sarah. You think he went in there and heard God, but he went and did the opposite. You think because he heard God say, obey your wife, Sarah, that he went and gave them what Sarah said, but then went in his cloth and went in that sackcloth of his and said, huh, here go 30 shekels. Just how to get you some food if you run low. I love you, hey God. Israel, daddy love you. No, he obeyed him. When God told Sarah, hey, send him away, Sarah told Abraham. And Abraham had a problem with that. That's why he went outside that night and God came and ministered to the man and said, obey. You can't tell me God don't tell husbands to obey your wives. We might be the head, meaning the covering, but we still got to be under subjection as well. I'm telling you, my wife may be smaller than me, but she a little bit more powerful than me. I, I do know that. I ain't gonna lie, I know that. I know she more powerful than me. Just because I'm up here preaching and teaching. Don't think, don't think that I'm up here on my own screen. Now these these prayers that she's praying for me. Seriously. Because if she wanna call me and say it's 5 30, I would still be in the house sleep. She didn't have to tell me, get up. She just said, it's 5.30. Mm -hmm. She did just what I asked. I said, wake me up at 5.30. She did just that. On the dot. It's 5.30. And I didn't go, oh, Lord. I'm so sick of this woman calling me. Or I didn't look at the phone. Man, I ain't finna answer that phone. When you love your spouse, you happen to talk to them. You don't regret answering the phone. Go ahead. What are you up now? What? You need some more money? Wait a minute. I didn't tell you I need no money. I asked you what happened with my car. Did you move some money? I checked our account. The one we supposed to have together called joint. And what was in there ain't in there. Well, what you doing going behind my back? I'm not going behind your back. I went and made a deposit. And when I got the slip, it didn't line up to when I checked it last couple of weeks ago. I'm just inquiring. Yeah. Did something come out that I didn't know about? Am I talking right? Mm -hmm. If you anything of a godly husband and you hear God, God going to say, explain to her and tell her the truth. Amen. You got any more? All right. I got some more, but I'm going to let you. Okay. Come on. Because we can pick this back up next Tuesday. Amen. We can keep this going. Y'all put it on me, though. Because everything I preach, I'm going back to watch so I can make sure I don't error. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm telling you, I don't want to error. I don't want to get further down there and then I get to messing up and that recall come back in and say, yeah, you preach it, but you ain't living it. Now, nah, I'm going to watch me. I'm going to watch the God in me. Speak to me. Y'all don't hear me. Come on, Mother Pat. What you got? Once upon out, um, you said before you married, mm -hmm. you know that you can't have your husband and Mm -hmm. He come to visit. You ain't material. You already have children, and they are not by him because you just meet him. You know y'all, right? Get to know each other, right? He coming over and looking more at your children more than he looking at you, mm -hmm. lusting after them. Mm -hmm. And when it happens, when he started molesting those children. And you don't take that word. You know they're telling you the truth because they ain't gonna lie to you like that. Right. You know, this man doing this touch me in different places, you know. But yet and still, you you done told him. Mama, he just done this, he hurt me, you know, he you know, you ain't you ain't really question that man, but you still going to marry that man. And you know it hurt your chick, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it it happens, you know. So you wanna know why? They still oh, married that man that you know they're simple. Hurting that children because you ain't that much of love in the world. How you gonna love, still marry that man? You're supposed to love your kids. You know, that's it. You're supposed to handle with him. Let me share you with you, you how. Life. Let me share with you how mm -hmm. they do it and why they do it. When, when a mother bring a man around and he is introduced as the man. And that man moves from being 
just that man to becoming more to that mother. And if he molests that daughter or son, mm -hmm. and they come and try and tell their mother, mm -hmm. and their mother does not heed to them, okay. it's because of the spirit of deception mm -hmm. that has been deposited into her spirit through a sexual act. Do you hear me? So the sex is a spiritual connection within itself. Sex, be quiet Josiah. Sex alone binds a woman to the man. But it don't bind a man to a woman. Because a man can lay down with that woman and then give herself some time to recuperate and go lay down with another woman. But that woman, when she lays down, she's receiving what he's depositing, which is his spirit. That is a marriage, a spiritual marriage that just took place where they have consummated through sex. Yeah. That's what the word consummated means. When the judge actually was his marriage consummated, that means did you have sex? Mm -hmm. So watch this. If he have fulfilled her sexually, sexual, fleshly desires, mm -hmm. then her mind is not on anything foul that he could do or be doing. Mm -hmm. So it's my children see that I haven't had a man in a long time. And to their mother, why do you want to ruin what I have all of a sudden? You just don't want me to be happy. She will refuse to hear what the children have to say. Some mothers, they're going to believe their daughters and their sons. Some mothers, they are not. Now, there are the reason why I said that is because there are two types of children. One is children who are raised to be honest and trustworthy so the mother or the father can trust their children. And then there are promiscuous children. Fast-tailed daughters. Daughters who, who are fast and mama can't tell them nothing because mama too fast. So if daughters say, Yo man touching or trying to touch on me. She not going to believe my her daughter. Because she already see that her daughter is fast. That's why it's not good for a mother to allow her daughter or her sons. And I don't care if it's in a church. To go and beg grown folks for money. No child should hop in no man's lap. And bounce on his lap and ask him for no money. I don't care if it is the deacon or the pastor. Get out of their lap and get your butt in your seat. And don't you beg no man for no money. Stay a child while you can. So, when sex is involved first before marriage. It makes it hard or it blinds the woman to the scheme of the devil. Mm -hmm. No mother wants to believe. Ooh, gee, God. No mother wants to believe that the same man that's sexing me is in the other room while I'm asleep raping my child. Mm -hmm. She just don't want to believe that. You got some mothers that tell you no, 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 that did not happen. No, 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 it, no, no. You're lying. No, no. Don't, don't stop telling yourself that. Beep, beep, beep. Slap yourself and wake up. It's not a nightmare. This is reality. Right. And some mothers would tell their daughters, okay, I'm going to deal with it. And they never do. They sweep it under the rug and leave that daughter with years of molestation that she got to walk in and walk with. So now she's on the edge when she do finally have a child and God forbid if her child is a daughter, she's not going to trust no man. 
So she going to struggle trying to find a husband. Do that make sense? Oh, yeah. So it's not right. And the reason why they do it is because of a spiritual soul tie. Mm -hmm. They get tied in sexually first. Mm -hmm. If sex is what you brought to the table to get that man, sex is what you're going to have to keep at the table to keep. Mm -hmm. Do you hear what I'm saying? If if your husband cannot take the fact that you said not tonight, baby, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And he can't lay there and hold you, mm -hmm. you got the wrong husband. Oh, yeah. You got the wrong husband. Mm -hmm. You got you you laying on the side of a sex demon. Mm -hmm. Someone who have not been delivered and who don't know how to humble and bring the flesh mm -hmm. under subjection. Mm -hmm. Most times. Wives don't want sex in the middle of the night. They just want you to roll over and just hold me. Sex don't fix everything. Do you hear what I'm saying? I know some women are weird. They like to get choked and beat up. And after that, come on, let's have some makeup sex. Got back. Baby, that was the best sex ever. You a stupid broad. You stupid. You let them come in the house smelling like dope and drink and alcohol and cigarettes and black and miles. And he musty. Because he had to walk home. Sweaty. And you let him dive on top of you. You know, I love you. Uh, oh, I love you, baby. I love you. Baby, I love you. Come on, come on. Go take a bath, man. I'm going to take a bath, man. You're going to come on. And you quit, quit. And he get the kiss. It. Okay, okay, okay. Just five minutes. And all. You get quick yourself up. And understand what you dealing with on your hand. Because you got a sex demon. Because the minute you say no, you're not even in your right spirit or mind. Don't worry about what you want to do. Somebody else with the and when you're dealing with a sex demon, I'm serious. I used to have a sexual demon. God had to deliver me from that. They not only tell you what you want to do, somebody else will, but they'll prove it to you. Women can have sex demons. Yo, you want to reject me? Okay. I'm going back to my ex. It's just that easy. That's why it's important not to flirt with the devil. That's right. I might work around some women on the job, but I don't need to be bouncing and hopping and flopping in their face okay. when my job is in the field right. or even if I'm in the office. Mm -hmm. If you come in to deal with me about the work it needs to stay work ethics. We need to keep it ethical concerning work relation. We don't need to be trying to think about what that disc going to feel like if I put you over it. Come on here somebody. And I ain't trying to screw the boss lady to get a promotion. And go home smiling in my white face like I earned that promotion. No, tell the truth. You got this way through sex. And when you lay down, you got to I'm going to say it again now. I can truly mean it. Be careful when you lay out with friendly sinners. Because the one that sin with you is going to definitely sin against you. If you want to know if somebody is yours, check with God. And then do your application on them. Run you a thorough background check. And run you a family History on them. Find out what their relationship is really like with their mama. That means you get to know their mama by name and go visit their mama. Don't take them with you. They're going to act the part. They're going to be around your mama. Let me get that for you. You know good and well you don't do nothing for your mama. Because if I come see your mama in secret, your mama going to tell me the truth about you. My son ain't ready for no wife. 
My son ain't even got his stuff together. My daughter ain't ready for no husband. Young man, you're going to be over here all the time talking to me, asking me why she do you like this. Why she out there playing with you like that? You got another question, Mother Pat? Uh, you can go home and write nothing.
going white. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going white. Glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Brother. I'm going white. Black folks, they go black. All right. Don't you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't you mean? Who don't? True. <laughs> man, I was in jail and he showed up. Oh, man, no. I better run. <laughs> Get away from him. His God's still in jail, waiting on him to come back to jail. He got a God that's a probation officer waiting to lock him back up. That ain't, I, I, I can't do it. But seriously, when you ask a man and his face, his body language quickens and the expression is in an angry look, yeah. you better know there's some deep control in there just waiting to get out because you spoke to a demon yeah. and not a light. You spoke to darkness, and you made darkness come out of the shadow. Yeah. And you caused what was in the valley of the shadow of death to show, you caused Satan to show his face. Because, mm -hmm. watch this, even Satan believes, but he trembles. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> you tremble, when something trembles, that's body language, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. He ain't trembling because he cold. I mean, he's showing that you're showing it up. Mm -hmm. What's another question that you would ask a man when you first meet him? What's the question? She said, I don't know. I ain't asked no question. I just took it. Come on. <laughs> I'm tired of being no around. Come on. Uh -uh. Come on, mama ready. Come on. You gonna marry me? Eyes are new. Eyes are married now, y'all. No. She said, I ain't asked no question. I just knew. Oh, no. Come on, honey. Talk to us. What's your plans? That's all you ask. What's your plans? Not, where do you see us? What's your plan? Oh, shoot. You know, I'm trying to get back on my feet. <laughs> there you go, that sign. Because in the process of you trying to get back on your feet, you're going to want to move in with me. And this is how they do it. They leave the tennis shoes and they come with house shoes. Y'all don't want to do this, do you? We're going to get out of here. Give me about a more minute. Not only just how you chill out, you don't get Grammy Awards for acting. That's only in Hollywood. And you better hope you win Best Actor. <laughs> but you leave one thing and come with another. And when you get ready to leave, you act like you forgot. That you left your shirt, mm -hmm. but you walked home or you left in a body shirt. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to being on the weekend, you want to hang out on a Friday, mm -hmm. watch a movie. Let's, uh, let's watch some Netflix and chill. You ain't been no more enthused about watching no Netflix, mm -hmm. but you're going to hang out because you really need a spot to rest mm -hmm. and nest. So you're going to hang out with me. But your control is telling you you need to make your move and you need to do it fast. Mm. You need to lock in this situation right here. Ain't that right? Mm. You need to lock it in. Because if you don't lock it in, somebody else is coming. Mm. And watch this. That Friday, you've been working all day and he ain't did nothing and you asked. So what you did all day? Shoot, I, when I start looking for some jobs, you know, when you hit it, you better run. You know. Okay. Or when you hear them say things like, you you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know what you're saying until you say what you're saying. Because okay. okay. telling me, you know what I'm saying, you ain't saying nothing, I don't know what you're saying. You get me? Mm -hmm. So, so so you went looking for a job? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. You don't even go no further. What type of job? Because if you ask me, man, what you mean what type of job, man? What's up? What, you interrogate me? That's when it's going to start happening. When you ask the right questions, that demon going to show up and show out. I think I'm just going to leave because uh, I don't even want to get into all this with you. No, see, you would have ran the devil off. But no, because you want to sit there with your fleshly thinking self. I ain't going to do nothing tonight. I'm just going to... 
If he rub my feet and hold me all night, I'm going to say, that's the man, right? That's the one. That's the man for me. He didn't ask for no sex. He's not supposed to. He's putting his seed in. He's dropping his seed in the ground. I don't care if you are good ground. You better not let no corrupt seed get in it. You can be good, but you can't turn what's corrupt into good. Only God can do that. So, his control is coming first in the form of manipulation so that he can deceive you at the same time. You want something to drink? Yeah, what you got in there? Watch this. You never asked him to get up and come in your kitchen, but you turn around. Hey, and he right up on you. Holding on. You ain't trying to step back and look in his face. Y'all know I ain't lying. And he looking you in your eyes and y'all, your pupils are going side to side real fast. You let him mesmerize you. You let that spirit intertwine and mingle and minister a seed of discord to your spirit. All he doing is making his move. Controlling the situation. Keeping you from being in control. First and foremost, this your house. You allow them in. Guess what? You should lay down the house rules first. You don't move unless I give you permission. Because I don't really know you like that to trust you enough to move around in my house. Come on here. Y'all ain't talking to me. When you come and you need to use the restroom, you need to ask. Don't get to looking. Okay. And I got to ask you, what you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for your bathroom. Why you just didn't ask me? Because your control in you tells you not to ask. It ain't teach you to ask nobody. It taught you to look around and find it, and you was going to get up and walk past me, and I was going to assume that I know where you going. Have you ever just been one of those ones that had a controlling band, man in your life or you got a controlling man right here, your husband or he was your boyfriend or whatever, you know, and all of a sudden you about to say, and you're like, oh, just, okay, just, you can't say nothing because it's all, he already went and did what he wanted to do anyway. So, when his control is being sown, when the church come in, he peeping it out. He already seeing which one he gonna run away. He already seeing the one that he know is gonna spot him out and gonna reveal that ain't the one. And half the time, it's that thug like son. That come and tell you, Mama, I don't know which, what you think that is. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't the one, Mama. Yeah. Son, you, you, you don't want to hear your song because he in the street. But don't you think that street recognize street? Okay. Huh? Don't you know them demons recognize each other? Yeah. And that's what demons do. They fight for territory. Oh, yeah. They fight for the territory. They take on to themselves seven other spirits and that person is left in the worse state than where they started out. Friday night, Netflix, song, church coming in. It's 10.30, 11 o'clock. Oh, mama, what's, what you got? What was that? Oh, it's my friend. And he gets up and introduces himself. He don't allow you to do it. He want to dab up with your son like he on their age level. Come on. A real man going to shake that young man head. Because a real man going to present something to him that that young man probably ain't used to. Man. What's up, man? Shake my hand. And if he's trying to really get to know the family, he ain't going to spend a night that Friday. 
God ain't going to talk to me. I close right there. If he really tried to get to know the family, he not going to spend a night that Friday because them, them teenage kids is expecting him to stay anyway. So they not fully asleep. So watch this. And I'm close. When, baby, don't move because I be selling my clothes and you know, it'd be like seven times. <laughs> my white girl go get hit to stop. I still be doing my mother clothes, mother clothes. <laughs> but if he really trying to get to know them, when they rise up in the morning, they go, where your friend at, mama? Oh, he didn't stay that night. What? Hmm. But then, he calls. Hey, y'all up? Checking on. Yeah, we up. She, mom, mom was smiling now. Yeah, we up. She all in the, looking at her hair. You know, she ain't brush her teeth, but she don't try to wipe some of that off. <laughs> what what you doing? Oh, uh, I just want to see if you and your family want to catch breakfast. Oh, you asking me if I'm a cook? No. Y'all want to go out to eat? Eat breakfast? You know, it's on me. Take them out in the daytime. The whole family. Because when you come to her, you got to accept the whole package. But when it's controlled, he show up at your house the next morning like Ray Charles did in that movie Ray. Man, Bird, it's been two weeks. Just show up. And think you just supposed to fall into his arms. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you ain't no Prince Charming. Okay. You're not my shining knight. Mm -hmm. So, Josiah, have a seat. At the church, I'm going to give you a whooping. I am. Just for acting up in church. Watch. Now, don't reach for mama. Daddy going to whoop them little demons out of you. Uh -huh. I'm going to whoop you right out the church. So, right when he's trying to not show that he's controlling, that's when the Lord will reveal to you how controlling he is. You can be out in the public and you're getting ready to make a decision on what to buy. And he come and put his broke life into your pocketbook mm -hmm. and make a decision for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the way it go. Instead of you buying what you was going to buy. And watch what you say. Well, I was going to get this. No, nah, you don't need that. even in that we're not even there yet for you to even come and tell but you you think that's love he looking out for me oh I know where you can get that same outfit from for cheaper sometimes you pay for the material you wear I don't care if the store do sell some material or some outfit like it if it's cheaper and you pull that string and all my clothes gonna fall off me, I ain't buying it. But you want me to be cheaper so you can get the remain or what's left over. Then watch this. Here come the lie. Here come mother. I was wondering if you can just front me a little something so I'm getting ready to start this job. No, no, notice. I'm getting ready to start this job. Now, I have this job, and I don't have no means of getting some food. I need some lunch. Watch this. A real man is going to say, you think you can fix me a couple of sandwiches or something to take to work with me? Ain't that right? He's not going to look for you to give him no $20. You think you can loan me $20 I'm, so I can give me something to eat while I'm at work? You know good well y'all ain't got no vending machine out there in the field. You work construction, y'all. You're going to be stopping by the store. You're going to get you a pack of cigarettes. You're going to buy you some beer. 
And that's, that's your food and your water. Come on here, somebody. Because when I ask you, did you love God, you frowned up. When you ask, can you come over? And I saw that you left a couple of outfits. You left your boxes and I had to wash them. Yeah, because you got women that do that. The man leave his clothes and stuff. And the, the, the mother go, man, my son ain't king. How he dread? And I wash your clothes, boy. Make sure you clean your boxes good. You ain't clean your laundry. You, you, you got to wipe. Make sure you wipe good. Mama, make my own look. Mm -hmm. Hey, you left your, you, did you know you left your boxes over here? You ain't tell him the same thing you just told your son. Mm -hmm. That it was Cocoa Christmas in them. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't pay attention to the signs. You shouldn't want a man that underwear is dirty on your first night you met him and he got out of his underwear. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't want to lay next to a man who's straight up musty and he ain't been out at work and had enough to come in and take a shower. Stop ignoring the signs. He smelled like perfume, so you believing that he was over his mama house. Mm. Stop ignoring the signs. Because when you stand before God and say, I do, guess what? God gonna make you honor, because God honors marriage. And it be hard for you to get out of something when God say, you got in it? Now let me show you what it feel like to be in it. And even when you want to get out of something, God say, I ain't delivering you right off. You ain't learned nothing if I come and rescue you because you're crying now. I want you to feel like this thing is going to take your life before I rescue you so you can understand the value of who you are as a daughter and as a queen. Now, y'all women better get ready because when it's the men time, I'm going to tear y'all up. We'll continue this next week. Come on, give God a hand. <laughs> Go home, think of some more questions. And hopefully by the strength of God and the grace of God, I'll be able, by his anointing, to answer these questions and we will stick with the Bible. Amen. Amen. I hope I did a good job tonight. You did a wonderful